This is the seventh video looking at steady state offsets. In this video, we're going to consider what happens when you add a sensor into the loop. First then, let's assume the familiar student is familiar with how to form and remove the steady state offset for a simple feedback loop like the one shown here. Now in this video, we're going to continue to assume that we're using unit set points of the form r equals 1 over s. And also, we're going to make one assumption which wasn't normal in the previous videos, that there's going to be a loop integrator to remove the offset. Um, that's necessary because otherwise you'll find that the discussions we're making uh, don't make sense and indeed could be far more complex than you want to deal with. What we're going to do is going to ask ourselves what happens when you add a sensor on the output and in practice there's always going to be a sensor to measure the output. Let's look at this diagram then. You'll notice what we've done is we've got the standard compensator in G in the forward path, but we've added into the return path this H of S, which represents the sensor dynamics. So something which measures the output. It could be a thermocouple or a voltmeter or something of that nature. Now earlier videos have shown that we can calculate the steady state offsets using the final value theorem. So for example, the limit as t goes to infinity of e of t is given as the limit as s goes to zero of this function here. You notice I've got 1 over 1 plus h of s, g of s, m of s. And also you'll notice that e of t is the same as 1 minus w of t. You'll notice the w signal in there. Now, the additional observation that we've made down here is this box at the bottom, that the limit as t goes to infinity of w of t divided by y of t is going to be the same <coughs> as the limit as s goes to zero of h of s. And that follows directly from earlier videos. First then, let's ask which signal goes to zero. Remember, we've assumed that there's an integrator in the loop. Now, the answer to that is quite simple. It's this error signal. We've shown in the previous videos that if there's an integrator in the loop, and you're using a step for the target r, then the steady state value of that e will be zero. Here's the formula then. The limit as t goes to infinity of e of t is given, given as the limit as s goes to zero of r over 1 plus h of s g of s m of s. And that's the limit as t goes to infinity. And here's the key point of r minus w t. However, here's our warning. I'll just see if I can move that box a little bit so we can see. Here's the warning. Offset is strictly defined as r minus y. Whereas the signal that we've calculated here using the final value theorem is r minus w. Not the signal we want, which is r minus y. So we need to ask, what are the repercussions of this observation? What's the steady state error? between the target and the output. These are the two signals we're really interested in if we have a sensor in the loop. Now, we're going to assume that the steady state value for E is zero because we've said we're going to assume there's always an integrator in the loop. What formula did we have then? We had this. The limit as t goes to infinity of y of t is r over the limit as s goes to zero of h of s. If we now substitute in what we know and we say what we're really interested in is the offset between the target and the output, there's the value there, r minus y of t, then what you're going to end up with is this formula over here. The error in the steady state between the target and the output is h of 0 minus 1 all divided by h of 0 times r. Now what do we think about this value? Well first of all the error is 0 if and only if h of 0 equals 1. So have a look in this box. If I want this box here to be 0, then I need the numerator term here to be 0. And that numerator term will only be 0 if h of 0 is 1. The second two observations are rather minor these two here. If h of 0 is greater than 1, you'll have a positive offset. And if h of 0 is less than 1, you'll have a negative offset. 
An example then. Find the steady state offset for the following system controller sensor. And again, as in uh, previous videos, we're going to make the assumption here that the closed loop is stable and you'll notice we've put an integrator in the loop. Here's the formula we're interested in. So the steady state offset between the target and the output is given as h of 0 minus 1 over h of 0 times r. Well, in this particular case, h of 0 equals 0.8. You can see that. And therefore, we're going to have 0.8 minus 1 over 0.8, which gives you minus a quarter into r. I should have put um, the r over here as well. So basically, the offset is minus a quarter r. So even though we have an integrator in the loop, because we have a sensor whose steady state gain is not unity, we've ended up with an offset between the target and the output. So in other words, a zero error coming from the summing junction does not imply that the output tends to the target when you have a sensor. So here's a reminder of some of the formula that we had. We had that the limit as t goes to infinity of wt over y of t is the limit as s goes to 0 of h of s. And we had that the signal coming out of the summing junction is given by this box here. The limit as t goes to infinity of r minus w. And that's 0 because we've assumed an integrator in the loop and obviously closed loop stability. And we also had this observation down here. Okay? that if you put those two top ones together, you're going to get r equals the limit as t goes to infinity of w of t. So that's come from this box here. And therefore, if I can replace w of t over here by r, and that's all I've done in this blue box here. You'll see I've simply replaced w of t by r. So I get the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t equals r over the limit as s goes to 0 of h of s. Clearly, therefore, the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t equals r if and only if the limit as s goes to 0 of h of s equals 1, which is the same observation that was made a couple of slides ago. So an interim summary. To obtain zero offset between the output and target with a sensor implies that the steady state gain of the sensor must be 1. However, in many cases, the steady state sensor gain will not be 1. So what are we going to do about that? How do we remove the offset when the steady state gain of the sensor is not one. Well, the solution is relatively straightforward. We recognize that all we need is a simple scaling of the target to make it appropriate for the sensor we've got. And this is the solution we're going to suggest. You replace the loop input little r of t by capital R equals h of 0 times little r. Here's the observation you want to look at. Um, we know that the loop gives us that the limit as t goes to infinity of the loop input, which here we've called capital R, minus w of t equals 0. So this observation here is the standard observation you got from the earlier videos when you've got an integrator in the loop. The output of the summing junction in the steady state is 0. We also know, because of the sensor, that we've got this. The limit as t goes to infinity of w of t is h of 0 times the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t. Now, what have I done in this next box? OK, first of all, perhaps if I rub out some of these bits here so we um, can see what we're doing. First thing I'm going to do is take this box. Oh dear, sorry, the, uh, it's playing up a bit here. Take this box here and put it in there. OK, the next thing I'm going to do is replace that W of T and you'll see all I've done there is replace w of t by what I've got over here. So I've simply taken those top two expressions and put them together to say the limit as t goes to infinity of capital R minus h of 0 times the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t equals 0. So this 
is automatic. Okay, that's proved in the earlier videos. If you have an integrator in the loop, that will be true. And now what I'm going to do is add in the final observation, which was this one here, that I'm going to define capital R to be h of 0 times the target I really want. And then I end up with this formula here, which says that h of 0 times little r minus h of 0 times the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t is 0. And that, of course, implies that the asymptotic output meets the target. OK, so what's the key summary here? If I replace R by capital R, which equals H of 0 times R, then I will get no offset between my desired target, lowercase r, and my output, y. Here's a block diagram to show you what we've done. You'll notice all that's required is we add this feed forward compensator over here with a gain H of 0. And h of 0, you'll notice there's a nice symmetry. It matches this bit over here. Now, an example here to demonstrate why this actually makes good engineering sense is you may have a sensor, for example, measuring meters per second. But the output of a sensor could well be in volts. And therefore, logically, the summing junction generating E should be basing 3 volts with another 3 volts. So what the feed forward does, this h of 0, is it makes the required adjustment to the units and the scale of the target, so you're actually comparing like with like. Here's an example then. Find the steady state offset for the following system controller sensor pair. So what we need to do is first of all have a look at h of s, and from this work out h of 0. Well, Shall I just put that straight in? h of 0 equals 16 over 20, which equals 0 0.8. And to then look at the feed forward, and the feed forward is 0 0.8. And because those two match, you will have no offset. I'm not going to do any of the other calculations because that's the observation we've made that if the gain here matches the steady state gain here, then you have no offset, assuming, of course, you've got an integrator in the loop. And you notice here, there's an integrator in the loop. So in summary, for simple loop structures, which include a sensor, the system's steady state offset can be eliminated if both there is an integrator in the loop and the feed forward compensator is added with the same steady state gain as the sensor. So we repeat that. You've got to add a feed forward compensator, which has the same steady state gain as the sensor. If there is no feed forward, then the steady state offset can be zero if and only if the sensor steady state gain is one. In practice, the inclusion of a sensor will imply a change of units, and so a feed forward is required to modify the units of the target regardless. And you will probably find that for all practical loops, there is indeed a feed forward in there somewhere.